Okay guys, let's solve top k frequent elements number 347 on leak code. So given an integer array of nums and another integer k, we need to return the k most frequent elements. And you may return the answer in any order. So that's pretty simple. It's just the top k most occurring elements. So for example, with the numbers of 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, and 3, well, we know that 1 occurs the most at 3 times, 2 occurs the second most at 2 times. We just want the top 2. And so we can return 1, 2, or 2. 2, 1 is the same answer. And of course, if you had just one number and you wanted the top one, well, then that's going to be the same number. It's actually guaranteed that the answer is going to be unique. So if you had three ones, two twos, and we'll say two threes with k equals two, well, that's a scenario you wouldn't have because you would run into three ones. You would want to have the one there, but then between the two twos and the two threes, you don't know which one you want to pick. Well, that's not a scenario you would have. So the first example that would come to my mind is getting a dictionary of the frequency so we'd have, well, one, there's going to be two of those. For all of the twos, there's going to be three of those. And for all the threes, there is going to be four of those. So now that we have this frequency dictionary, we can basically just sort it by its values because we want the highest frequencies. So for example, if we sorted that in descending order by the values, we would have, well, we'd have three, we have four of those, we'd have two, we have three of those. And at the end, we'd have one and two of those. So now that we've sorted of this by its values, we just need to pick up the top two things at the beginning. That's going to bring us three and two, and that would be a final answer. So the runtime of this would be, well, getting this step, getting the counter, that's just gonna be O of N. We're just adding to a hash map while going through the array. And then the other step of sorting it, well, we know sorting anything is going to be big O of N log N. And N in this case is basically the same N as the array, because if you had all unique elements, if this was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, well, you'd be sorting that many things. And so this would be an O of N log N answer. It turns out we can use a heap to get an answer of n log k, where again, k is the number of things you need to pick up because if you use a heap, we can store up to k things in the heap. And so it's going to be a log of k interaction to move around the objects in that heap. If you take an element out of it, that is going to be log of k. And if you put an element back into it, that will also be log of k. So to show you that answer, we would actually use a min heap. Okay, so it stores the minimum element. So to get the heap, we would actually need that same dictionary from before of the frequencies. So we'd again have one, two, we'd have two of three, and we would have three, there's four of those. After we have that, these are now basically tuples of the frequency and the number that exists. So we don't want to sort this thing, we'll just go through its keys and values. So here we would get a tuple two and one, we would put the value first, because we want the heap to be organized by the minimum frequency. Okay, so if we put two one onto this heap thing, okay, this is just going to be my heap over here, it's going to organize it by the minimum frequency, the first item in this tuple. And then if the frequencies were the same, it would then organize it by this, but that doesn't really matter. Now the point of our heap is to hold the k most frequent elements on here, and it's always going to have the minimum frequency at the top. Since the size of the heap here, the heap is just one element. Well, if we look at 2, 3, well, we'd have the tuple of 3, 2, we're just going to immediately put that on the heap, because we want it to have the k most frequent, and this is going to be a log of k interaction with the heap, we'd have 3, 2 here. And 2, 1 is going to be above it because this has a smaller frequency than 3. Okay, now things get interesting with this tuple because we'd have, we have four threes, that's the highest frequency. We want this in the heap and we'd say, boop, put it in the heap, that is a log k interaction. And we have four and three, that's gonna be at the very bottom. And then we need to pop this off. So this is basically a heap push pop operation. We push it on and then we pop off the topmost. So that gets popped off. We don't really care about that. And we are through the array. And notice that we have the things that we want here. Because remember, the frequency is the first thing, the keys are over here, we wanted the answer to be two and three. And so that is our answer. So that's one way to do it, which is using a min heap. There's actually another solution where you could use a max heap, and that is going to be an operation of n, because we're going to go through n times putting stuff potentially on the heap, and n times we are going to do at most a log k interaction, because we're going to have k things on the heap. 
Now you might be wondering why this is even any better because n log n and n log k are very similar. It's still n log something, except if you can assume that k is significantly smaller than n, which is actually kind of safe because if you had a million elements in here, you're probably not going to have k as like a million. If k is even just like 10% of what n is, you're probably going to ask the question of like, what's the topmost element? What are the two most top? What are the three most top? You can kind of make that that assumption, of course, in the very worst, n log n and n log k are the same, but still you would kind of prefer n log k. Although it turns out there's actually a big O of n solution. So first I want to show you the heap solution in code and then we'll come back and do the O of n answer. So for the heap solution, we're going to need two libraries. We definitely need to import heap q in Python. That's going to let us use a min heap. And we are also going to do from collections, we'll import counter, which just makes getting a count of the elements as a dictionary a little bit faster. So we'll immediately get a counter, which is equal to a counter with a capital C of the nums. So that just gets a count of all the elements. And then we will get a heap is initialized as an empty list, okay? So then what we can do is save for each key and val in the counter dot items. We know that the key is going to be the number and the value is going to be its frequency. And we can just say if the length of the heap is actually less than k many things, well then we can do a heap q dot heap push. So we don't need to worry about popping things because we want k elements on the heap. We can just do a heap push with you give it the heap as the first argument and then we put the val and the key. Okay, because we want it organized by the minimum frequency, which is the value. And we also want the key which is the number stored in it as well. And then otherwise, at this stage, the heap must be exactly k things because we're only going to let k things in there due to this statement here. We do heap q dot heap push pop. I know it looks kind of funny, but we push something on and we immediately pop it off. We give it the heap and it's the same thing. It's going to be the vowel and the key. Even if that vowel or its frequency is very, very small, it's still going to try and put that on the heap and it's just going to immediately pop it off. And if this tuple did belong, we had a very high frequency, we put that at the bottom of this, and then it's going to pop off whatever that minimum was. At this stage, all of the stuff we need is stored in the heap, and that's actually just a Python list. You interact with it with the heap queue library, but it's still just a Python list. And so we can return the list of h at one for h in the heap. We're just going through and getting all of the value and key tuples. And the thing we want is the key, that's the number itself. And this is going to be k things because we're going through the entire heap and the heap is always gonna have, at least after it's done this part, it's gonna have k many things. So if you were to submit that, that actually is going to work. And we would write down that the time complexity, well, it's n because we're going through, we're getting a counter, but that's actually going to be dominated by, we're going to go through the counter. So that's n many things potentially. What are we going to do at each step? We're going to do at most a log k interaction. There's k many things in the heap. It's a log to push, it's a log to pop, making it also a log to push pop. And so we'll do O of n times log k is going to be the time complexity for that answer. And the amount of things we'll store while well, we're storing potentially o of n we're definitely storing o of k except n is going to be bigger than k and so we'd say that the space complexity is dominated by just o of n okay but that was the n log k answer and as we said we can get an o of n answer basically the idea is that of all the elements here well if this is length if this has a length of nine there's no way that any element in here could appear more than nine times once twice up to nine many times you could have just the same element every single time, but there's no way that that's going to be bigger than the length itself. So since we have a minimum number of times, which is going to be, well, zero times or one time, either is fine. You could have at most nine many times. Well, then we can make an array where the index is actually the frequency or the number of times that something is going to occur. And we don't really need these spots, but they would exist. So we get our frequencies and we see, well, one appears two times. And so we would put one at the frequency of two. Okay, remember, this is the frequency. So we're going to put the list of one here because multiple elements could have the same frequency. And then we also have two and three here. So we'd say, okay, well, at the three frequency, we are going to have the number of two. And at the four frequency, that is going to have the number of three. And notice something very interesting. If you go backwards through the array from the end, well, you're going to have this organized by the top elements because this is the frequency. You'll have the three first, and then you'll have the two, and you'd have whatever you'd have over this way. But we only want the top K from 
um, going this way through the array. And just to be clear why we actually need these as lists, we'd have four threes. Suppose we also had four fours. Well, then in the four spot, we would also need this to have three and four. Okay. In the four frequency, three, we have four threes, and we also have four. We have four fours. So they both belong there. So we'd go backwards through the array, and we'd have like some new array where we're picking stuff up. We'll get three, we'll get four in there, and you do this up until K, which is actually two, and so this would be our answer. So the code to do this is actually pretty cool. We'll just get N is the length of the numbers, and then we'll again, we'll import our counter. So we'll do from collections, we'll import port counter, and then we will get a counter is equal to a counter of all the numbers. That's again, just the keys are the number and the value is the frequency. And we're gonna get these things, I'm gonna call that array basically buckets, because it's kind of like a bucket sort, if you know what that is. If not, really don't worry about it. So we're going to set them all just to be zeros at first. So we're going to get n plus one of these things. What this is, is basically saying if we had the array of, we'll say one, two, and three, well, then the thing that we would produce here, zero, 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 and zero. Okay, it's n plus one, three plus one is four. So they're all going to be initialized to zero, just saying that we don't have any stuff there. And this frequency is for things that occur zero times. We'll actually never use that. It just helps the math. This is for stuff that occurs once. This is for stuff that occurs twice. And this is if you had something that occurred all three times. So then similar to before, we'll get for each number and the frequency that we have in the counter dot items. And we'll say, hey, if the buckets at the frequency, okay, remember the frequency is the index. So if the buckets at the frequency, if that is still equal to a zero, we don't have anything there yet, but we want to place the number there because it has this frequency. So we'll set buckets at the frequency. We'll make that equal to the number, but the list of that number. Otherwise, if it wasn't a zero, that means we've already done this because we already have a list of, you know, one number there or two numbers there and so on. And so we would need to do buckets at frequency, same thing, except it's a list. So we will append with the number. We'll add one more number that has that frequency. Okay, now after we've built up this buckets array, we just need to go backwards through it and pick up what we want. So we'll get a return list of stuff that we want and we'll say, go backwards through the array. You do that by saying for I in the range of, so start at n inclusive, because again, we have n plus one things. You can think about the last index is actually n. So n inclusive, we go down to negative one. Basically, this is exclusive, so it actually goes down to zero, and we'll do it as a step of going down one. Now we can say if the buckets at i, if that is not equal to zero, okay, that means it is a list and it's stuff that we want to pick up. So we will return dot extend. Not sure if you've seen extend before, but basically if you had say a list of just one, two, and you called dot extend on that. So if you extended that of say four, five, and so that would make it the list of one, two, four, five. Okay, so that's extending the list. Okay, so we want to return dot extend with buckets at I, and yes, you want to pick up all of the stuff that's in there. Now, because we have the case over here that it's guaranteed that the answer is unique, you can pick up all of what's in buckets at I because you're never going to hit K elements in the middle of this bucket. Okay, it's going to be either before or after one of these buckets because the answer is going to be unique. So if the length of return is equal to K, if we've picked up K many things, then we can just immediately, well, we'll just do a break so that it's pretty clean. We will return ret out here. And if we were to submit that, then that would work just fine. Okay, so as we said, this has a time complexity of big O of n. Why is that? Well, we pick up the counter in linear time. We can go through all the stuff in linear time, and all of this is a constant operation. And then we just go backwards through the array, and we pick up at most k things. So the time is going to be a big O of n, and the space complexity, well, we are going to store maybe n things over here. We'll have n things in the bucket, and that's really all we're going to store here. We also have return, but that's just going to be at most k things. And so the space is going to be dominated by O of n. So that's our answer. And that's the fastest possible algorithm. I hope this was helpful, guys, and have a great day.